Good morning and welcome to the Etsy virtual event on boosting the impact of research and innovation through standardization. I'm Guy Daniels and in this session we will be looking at terahertz technology and why the time is now right for standardization. And to explain more, I am joined by Regis Professor Rahim Tafazoli of the 6GIC at the University of Surrey and Marcus Muke, Vice Chairman of the Etsy Board. Welcome, both of you. Thanks very much for taking part in this event today. Rahim, if you would like to start the presentation and then we'll hear from Marcus and follow up with a short discussion between the three of us. So, Rahim, over to you. Thank you very much, Guy. Uh, before we discuss about specifically about terahertz, I would like to just share with uh, everybody the way that we see the future generation or 6G beyond 2030. To start with, we need to adopt a new approach to 6G. And that is what we have done in consultation and discussion and agreement with our 5G Innovation Center um, industrial partners, and we think is a quite unique approach to 6G based on the lessons we have learned so far, uh, previous five generations. We would like to start the research, innovation, and the standardization activity based on a clear use case with a clear business case. We don't want to start with a target KPIs, for example, speed or latency or whatever. We consider 5G capabilities, not only what has been standardized, but also futures, release 17, release 18, and it could be release uh, 19 and 20 is coming up. So whatever we propose, it has to be beyond 5G capability. Otherwise, 5G is a very powerful and a strong uh, technology. And we also need to consider the social and industry challenges in terms of productivity, sustainability, environment, as well as digital, digital divide. So all of this has contributed to the vision that we adopt for next 10 year research and innovation. So we believe that the clear use case and uh, with a clear business case is to look at the next generation of video beyond virtual reality and adding the fourth dimension to virtual reality, uh, which is a 3D video. Uh, and that is, the fourth dimension is uh, ambient information, all sorts of information, which is necessary to make the communication uh, to a person more smarter. And that would enable real fusion and interactive fusion between virtual and physical worlds where the objects and the human being are. Part of this information or ambient information is human senses. Currently, we are transmitting or receiving two of human senses, which is hearing and seeing. So we need to capture the other three, which is touch, smell, and taste. And this way to integrate it with a 3D video, which is a virtual reality in form of 360 degree holoportation, and effectively making a teleportation from science fiction into a science fact. And the important thing is we, we want 
the objects or people, whether in the real world or in a physical world or a hybrid of these, to be able to interact with each other. And that, we believe that, requires a new functionality in the networks, which I will refer to that one later. But nevertheless, we believe that future 6G for 2030 plus uh, is an integration between communication and the sensing. And we expect there are three major components, network components in this uh, future architecture. One is a short range, which could be based on terahertz for sensing and actuation of all the ambient information or device to device or uh, short range communication. Another one is a cellular system for providing the wide area communication. And for open areas, we need to look at non-terrestrial systems like a satellite communication. But all of these systems, they need to, from a user's perspective, they need to be appear as one system. So one device, a um, communication device, doesn't matter whichever serves you best, provide that connectivity. So if you want to compare this with uh, 5G capability, 5G we had speed, a mass connectivity, uh, low latency and high reliability. And we believe that all of these together with AI will be delivered through release 17, 18 and could be released 19 and 20 by 2026. So compared with that for 6G for 2030 plus, we are suggesting that we focus on coverage, connectivity. Another aspect is time synchronization. When we have two objects or more interacting with each other in the virtual world or a physical world, the time difference between all these objects and these communication links needs to be with a certain limit to provide natural reaction and interactions between them, as well as the time jitter, which is very important. And these are beyond, especially time uh, synchronization, is beyond 5G capability, because 5G was never designed uh, with time synchronization uh, in mind. And because all these objects, whether they are virtual world or in a uh, physical world, they will not interact with each other and they're not going to be static. So we need high quality, high resolution geolocation uh, as well as location update. And that is, uh, even though it is part of it, is within the release 17 of 5G, but the high quality, high resolution geolocation uh, we need to research and to include it as part of the next generation system. So on terahertz spectrum and communication, um, we are talking about uh, 0.1 terahertz or uh, 100 gigahertz all the way to 750 and even higher uh, part of a spectrum. And we need to be aware of the characteristics of propagation in these sort of frequency bands and consider the atmospheric um, attenuation and many other parameters that affects the communication. And uh, it's very difficult to provide high speed I haven't mentioned any speed whatsoever so far. For example, some people are talking about terabits per second for communication using terahertz. Below 0.1 or above 10 terahertz is very difficult to provide 
uh, terabits per second because the electronic circuitry will be moving to more optical circuitry and also the bandwidth even though there could be a huge amount of bandwidth the power constraint and the safety to users to people is a major consideration is to be considered so i believe that i'm suggesting that we need to uh, understand the radio propagation in terahertz band and then make an informed decision which part of band we should be focusing for 2030 plus. So in order to provide impactful research, we draw upon experience that we had in the previous five generations. I believe that in order to mobilize the research and innovation community, we need very quickly decide on what part of the terahertz bandwidth spectrum are we focusing for future communication and sensing and how much bandwidth is available. We also, another important aspect is we need to provide a good understanding on channel behavior and propagation and provide that information to the research community to do the further research and innovation in this area. If you look at wide range of frequency bands, we are diluting our effort in providing impactful research. We also need to uh, look at other standards, other aspects of the standardization. For example, sensing. What we sense? How do we sense? How we integrate the sensing information into the communication? For the coverage, we need to not only focus on the cellular system for the standardization, but also short range is going to be network of networks as well as non-terrestrial networks. So how do we provide this integrated system? Whereas from the user's perspective, it doesn't notice that it's connected through the satellite or terrestrial or the short range uh, systems. And I think other things that we have learned from the previous generation, we need to pull together our efforts and collaborate with each other. Not only the telecom community in Europe, but also other disciplines. We need to look at the social impacts of the integration and fusion between virtual and uh, physical world. We need to look at the new type of material. It can sense, for example, touch or smell or taste and integrate that material into our um, communication fabric. And I believe that we need to, at least in Europe, mobilize our effort from academia, from industry, large and small, and pull in the same direction. Perhaps we need to ask Etsy to provide this platform that enables researchers from different countries and different disciplines to come together and share the results and share the findings in order everybody pulls in the same direction and makes this exciting vision for beyond 2030 a possibility. I would like to, at this stage, hand over to Marcus for the way forward and the final words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rahim, for a very brilliant and, and actually inspiring 
um, presentation and also for the nice bridge you gave uh, towards towards Etsy and myself. Yeah, so so as you said, um, it, it, it also seems to me that the time is really right uh, to start an activity in Etsy to bring industrial and uh, academic experts together in order to uh, work towards a future terahertz um, system. But as you, as you also said uh, very nicely, I, I think uh, we probably shouldn't jump right away into the specific definition of uh, an access layer technology, but rather we should get together and um, focus on a clear understanding of the physical characteristics of terahertz uh, systems, um, ideally based on um, experimentation and, and, and measurements in, in the labs that, that are available in Europe. So as a, as a first step, we, we could, for example, uh, target a, a feasibility study, uh, right? And uh, address questions such as uh, propagation modeling, channel modeling, and uh, identification of other parameters that, that would be essential for the further design of, of the actual uh, access layer. Um, because there are obviously lots of questions open. I mean, which, which type of um, modulation schemes should we, should we use? Which, uh, which type of channel bandwidth are actually feasible? Uh, which uh, power amplifier components are available on the market? Um, is is set right, yeah. And once once we have that understanding, um, the definition um, or work towards an, an access layer would would definitely make sense, yeah. So so I would really encourage uh, your organization, yourself, and the community as a whole to interact with Etsy, to uh, engage in a discussion for the setups of uh, such an activity. So I have. For example, the creation of an industry specification group terahertz in mind. And I'm certain that um, as soon as we have um, a reasonable number of founding members, such an activity would, would be ready to be started in Etsy. So thank you. Thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. Well, thank you, Marcus, and thank you, Raheem. Um, as Marcus says, it was indeed a very interesting presentation. Plenty to digest there and think about. Um, I've, I've got a couple of quite basic questions, if I can. Raheem, um, first of all, why terahertz? Because we know the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength, the more limits on propagation and coverage. So if we look at spectrum beyond millimeter wave, are we purely looking at terahertz for um, ambient sensing, really short range ambient sensing, is that its focus? Yeah, no, that's a very good question. Is uh, be below 100 gigahertz, is there is not a huge amount of bandwidth available to, uh, because we don't know what sort of speed and communication and latency and time synchronization we require. So terahertz provides that opportunity because of the huge amount of bandwidth, especially between 0.1, uh, terahertz, uh, that sort of, we call it low terahertz, which is about 90 to say 110, 120 gigahertz. Uh, uh, that sort of is where there is a huge amount of spectrum available. And uh, also uh, we can utilize the electronic uh, system to for the transmitter and receiver, whereas we can go to higher uh, terahertz that it would be uh, more difficult uh, and it's more optical, uh, 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 closest to the optical detection techniques and, and transceivers. And, uh, and also in terms of the power that you require for the low terahertz, uh, from the human safety point of view, it is safe and secure. So what we, we thought that because as you rightly said, the higher we go the frequency by the law of physics, if you are limited with the amount of power, the range gets shorter and shorter. So we thought that it would be ideal for short range communication, could be device to device, device to the sensors, for some of the ambient information sensing and actuation, and also 
is because of the huge amount of bandwidth which is available there, it would allow us to have electronic image of our environment uh, as well. So we can project that electronic 360 degree uh, uh, of the image, electronic image of our environment and Im embed that information into the communication system. So sensing and actuation is one of uh, some uh, some of the uh, information that terahertz can help us uh, to carry that information to be integrated with the wide area cellular networks thank you Raheem for clarifying that and Marcus what criteria do you need at Etsy for you to decide to set up an ISG or or similar group and and does the terahertz field meet this criteria yet yeah thank you very much for the question and just up front i i'm convinced that uh, the terahertz field indeed meets the criteria but so what what do we need so we need to proceed in two steps so the first step would be indeed the creation of an industry specification group and for that we need um, the expression of interest of etsy members and uh, commitment to become members of a founding team um, for such an ISG. Um, and in order to uh, become members of um, uh, the founding team of such an ISG, I would recommend to get in touch with Etsy to express your interest. And all of the information is available on the Etsy website at www.etsy dot org uh, slash research so there's actually a plethora of information related to research available and you will find also all the related uh, contact information um, the next step would be the creation of a work item which requires the support of four etsy members so as soon as we have those four etsy members signing up for an activity such as for example the study of physical parameters and the development of uh, propagation and channel models, we would be up and running and uh, yeah, and here we would go. So I, I think we, um, we see clearly the opportunity to get this uh, done in, in the short term. So yeah, please, please let me invite you to get in touch with Etsy and uh, to discuss the next steps with the Etsy Secretariat. Thank you very much, Marcus. And yes, please do get in touch with Etsy if you're interested. Thank you again, Marcus and Raheem, for joining us today. Now, we have many presentations, panel discussions and interviews across this 2D event. And if you've missed anything, not to worry, it's all available to watch later on demand. Stay with us now for our next session, which is a presentation on leveraging research and innovation in security standards using the example of the Inspire 5G Plus project. Goodbye for now. Yeah.